Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. This is the Electricians in Action, where we get together and we talk about the code before we go out and fight the good fight. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get to it this morning. So this is something that's kind of heavy on my heart. I want to talk to you guys about because it's something that is going to protect you and going to protect me as well. So if you're new to the game, these are the new LED disc wafer lights. That's what we're calling them. Most guys are calling them. You can call them whatever. It's fine. But uh, what they do is they really are the best thing since sliced bread at face value. So looks just like a can light. You can pretty much put them anywhere. You cut the hole. Now they need to make a little bit wider lip on most of these brands because the hole has to be almost perfect. But if you get the hole cut, you can stick these feet up in there. These feet grab up into the ceiling after you wire your junction box down in your hand and lay it up in the ceiling or screw it to a stud. You can use these on new construction too. And at face value, they are the best thing since sliced bread. But I do want to give you a small warning today. Not all of these lights are created equally. And this is what I'm talking about here. This is the instruction manual of a certain brand. I'm not going to give the brand out, but I just wanted to use it as an example. And the biggest thing with this that you have to watch out for is always read your manufacturer's instructions. Because the whole point of these, you know, these type lights is that, hey, you can put them anywhere. If you land on a stud, if you land on a pipe, if you land on this, whatever you land on, you can go ahead and install it. At least that's how they were kind of pitched to us or what we took them and ran with. But I do want to note here in these manufacturer's instructions, I want you to look very close here. Number one, ensure the space above the installed fixture is at least three inches. So above this entire fixture, there has to be a clear space for at least three inches. Number two, cut the hole in the ceiling as round as possible using the template provided. Before cutting, ensure that the holes do not impinge on joists, pipework, cables, or other building services. So it's super important that we understand that not all of these are created equal. This one here, you cannot put it on the joist. You cannot put it on a pipe. You cannot put it on other parts of the building or structure. And that you must ensure that at least three inches above it is clear. And the, the question is, is that kind of defeats the entire purpose here? That, the whole point of these wafer lights was that they're super thin. You can install them almost anywhere. It doesn't matter what you hit. Because the hardest part about laying out can lights on rework is that you don't know what's in the ceiling unless you can crawl above in the attic and then you're sending a little flag up and you lay out three of them and then you go to lay out three other cans and they don't they do hit on a stud. So then you're back to square one trying to lay these cans out where they'll look symmetrical. The beauty of these was is it didn't matter where you landed. You laid your cans out where you wanted pretty much and you were able to use them, but they're not all created equal. So just be careful. These have to have three inches of airspace above them. And if I've got three inches, the chances are I've got three more inches and I can just put a full cut in can structure. So just wanted you guys to be aware of this this morning. Everything that we do on this channel ultimately is to protect all of us. I don't want you guys to get caught up on this. And nowadays you run the risk of not miswiring it or it arcing or sparking. We have a lot of other technologies going on here. But the biggest factor that we have as, as electricians is um, equipment malfunction. And it's because they're cheap, they're coming from overseas, they bang them out, they have no ultimate liability if something happens to them. What are you going to sue, some company over in China? I don't think so. So at the end of the day, I want you guys to be careful and to protect yourself. I had a buddy of mine, one of these LED disc lights caught on fire and started burning in the ceiling. So one of the same wafer lights, maybe not the same brand, but same uh, type light. So I just want you guys to be careful out there that it, we're not protecting ourselves against our wiring as much as we, you know, that used to be our biggest you know, thing. Of course, you still want to do rock solid connections and make sure you're using AFCI and GFCI protection. But now we're protecting ourselves against these manufacturers. And the biggest thing here is that the th what they would do is, you know, you know, I pray that nobody got hurt if one of these lights malfunction, but they would come out and look at the way you installed it. And they would take down every other light in the room. And if they were installed incorrectly, then you know who it falls back on. So it's just one of those things that we've got to watch out for. So I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I've dedicated my life to help you become everything that you can be in life and in the electrical industry. I want you to know that I'm praying for you today. You've got someone in your corner every day praying for you. I hope you have a great day today. And if there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.